Before you can attempt a renovation project on a building that's falling apart, like this one behind me over here, you need to know what that building is made up of. You need to order the right supplies and get them delivered on site. The human body is one of the most complex pieces of machinery on the planet. We cannot renovate our health or our bodies unless we provide the right supplies to each and every cell of the body. The body has an incredible capacity to heal, to replace broken cells, to fix the broken pieces, but we need to provide the right supplies. I invite you to get your work clothes on, to put your thinking cap on and come and rethink with us how we can renovate our health. It is 6 a.m. in the morning here with me. You might hear the roosters from the neighbors and uh, I've managed to find myself so busy these days that I don't get time to make videos often enough. So I thought this morning I would quickly take a gap bright and early before everybody else is up to share a little bit of information with you. Now, I've been meaning to make this video for a long time because it follows on from one of the previous videos we've done where we describe and explain the necessity of having good quality blood, having blood vessels that are open and um, having a good flow of blood throughout the body. We spoke in our previous video about the fact that perfect health depends on perfect circulation. And of course that includes a number of things. That includes perfect blood circulation, but it also includes perfect circulation of the lymphatics and perfect circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid in the spinal column. All the circulation of fluids in the body have to be perfect and the quality of ingredients delivered to each and every cell has to be right in order to maintain the health of every cell. If you want more detail on that, go and have a look at the previous video. We'll add the link in the description box below. So this morning, what I wanted to touch on briefly was the concept of inflammation. And I'm going to share one or two slides with you. But basically what I want to emphasize is that inflammation is sometimes very, very badly misinterpreted. What are we talking about when we talk about inflammation? Most people recognize that inflammation refers to redness and swelling and sometimes itchiness and discomfort of an injured area of the body. Now inflammation can come in various shapes and sizes. I can have an insect bite on my arm or my hand for instance. If a mosquito has bitten me, that little spot could become very red, very swollen, very itchy and very uncomfortable. And it can last for any number of minutes or sometimes hours depending on the person. I can have inflammation from a cut. I can have inflammation from um, developing an abscess, an infection of some kind. I can have inflammation that is just local to an injury on a skin or, you know, if I hurt myself or bumped myself or bruised myself, or I can have inflammation in my entire body, which we would call systemic inflammation. So inflammation can have various shapes and forms. And this particular picture that I'm going to share with you now helps to explain this a little bit better. We have something called acute inflammation, which happens as a result of something that goes wrong, whether it's an allergic reaction, a chemical irritant, an infection, trauma like an injury, uh, a burn, a laceration, cut or wound, a frostbite, whatever it may be. There's first something that damages some part of the body, whether it's a small part or a bigger part, that then results in acute inflammation. Now I want to emphasize at this point that inflammation and infection is not the same thing. Many people confuse the two. Infection which is caused by bacteria or other microorganisms. Infection is one of the causes of inflammation, but it's not the only cause of inflammation. And it certainly isn't always one and the same thing. So this is important for us to distinguish because many people will assume that the minute they see redness or swelling or some signs of inflammation, they assume that there is infection there and therefore they want to get antibiotics or many doctors prescribe antibiotics very easily in that scenario. But not all kinds of inflammation is caused by infection. That is crucial for us to remember. All right, so we've established that there are multiple different causes that can cause acute inflammation. Now that acute inflammation, as we've said, is where we see the redness and the swelling and sometimes itchiness or whatever. But let's talk for a moment about why that happens. Why is there redness? 
there's redness because the body has recognized an injury or a problem and has sent extra help to that area in the form of increasing the blood circulation to that area. This is crucial for us to understand. The body's response to an injury or an allergic reaction or an infection or trauma or wound or whatever the case may be. When cells in the body are damaged, that is recognized and the body responds by sending extra blood circulation to that area. Now, when you send extra blood into an area, say for instance I have a wound on my hand and the body has caused extra blood to flow into that area, that extra blood coming into the area will cause the red discoloration on the skin. It will sometimes cause an increased pressure because there's more blood pushed into that area so there's pressure that causes the pain because that pressure puts it stimulates the pain receptors so that extra blood flow causes a bit of the extra discomfort or the pain in that area it can sometimes even cause that area to swell because there's extra blood pushed into that zone is that a bad thing no it is excellent that the body responds in that way <clears throat> and sometimes we are very quick to want to counteract that process we want to take away that inflammation because it causes discomfort. But we forget that the extra blood flow to that area is essential for healing the damage or for healing the, the injury or whatever the case may be. So I want you to really take this message home that acute inflammation is the body's response by sending extra blood circulation to an injury or damaged cells. And that is good. We want to help the body to do that. We want, don't want to counteract that. It is essential at this point of acute inflammation that we don't interrupt what the body is trying to do, but rather try and assist it. When we take medications like anti-inflammatories, we are preventing the body from responding correctly. So that is not an appropriate response. Anti-inflammatories, yes, will take away the pain, but the goal is to heal the injury and anti-inflammatories will not help that process. What can we do to enhance this process of responding by improving blood circulation into an area? There are a number of things we can do. Number one, we can ensure that the quality of blood is good. We want to know that when the body sends extra blood, that that blood contains the right ingredients. So following the new start principles, which we have briefly mentioned in some videos, but we, we will still expand on that a little bit more. Following those new start principles of nutrition, exercise, drinking enough water, getting sufficient sunlight, etc., etc., those principles are essential to put the right ingredients into the blood so that the blood that is delivered contains the right ingredients for restoring the damaged cells. Number two, we can enhance the blood circulation to an area by doing contrast hydrotherapy. What is the benefit of contrast hydrotherapy? I'm not going to touch on this in too much detail because we discussed this in some other videos as well. But essentially, it causes better circulation of blood to an area. If I have had an injury on my hand and I see the redness and swelling, which is my body's natural and good response to send extra blood circulation, I can put ice on that area and just put ice, which will reduce the swelling, but it will not improve the blood circulation to that area. When I do contrast hydrotherapy, where I alternate back and forth between really warm and icy cold and really warm and icy cold, I am encouraging better blood circulation to that area. In other words, I'm working with the body and enhancing what the body is trying to do. So getting good quality blood through the New START principles, doing contrast hydrotherapy to the area that is injured are both excellent mechanisms of helping the body restore and heal injury or damage to cells. The other thing I can also do is I can use um, certain natural remedies like herbs that enhance healing. For instance, herbs like comfrey are excellent because they are both anti-inflammatory. In other words, they take away the excess inflammation, but they enhance cell proliferation, which means that they help the body to make the new and healthy cells at a faster rate or at a quicker rate. So those sort of things can help. Putting charcoal poultices onto an area also helps to reduce the excess inflammation, but enhances blood circulation. It helps to draw out toxins and um, poisons out of an area. It helps to draw out infection if that is the cause of the inflammation. So that's another way that we can help to enhance what the body is trying to use. 
We'll, we'll expand on the remedies in a different video. But today's core message I want you to understand is that inflammation is not your enemy, especially acute inflammation. When does inflammation become a problem? Inflammation becomes a problem when it becomes chronic. When there's an injury to certain cells in the body that is not healing. And sometimes we are the, the greatest obstacle for preventing that healing. When we keep blocking what the body is trying to do, or when the blood is of a poor quality and we're not delivering the right ingredients to that injured area, then that inflammation is ongoing because the body keeps trying to heal and the healing isn't taking place. And the body is trying to heal and the healing is not taking place. Chronic inflammation causes other problems. And as we see on this diagram again, chronic inflammation can cause heart disease, neurological disease, which is disease of the nervous system. Autoimmune disease, what is autoimmune disease? In brief, it is where your body starts attacking itself. Chronic inflammation can lead to autoimmune disease. It can lead to rheumatoid arthritis, cancers, lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Various conditions can result when inflammation continues on and on and on. And in particular, the chronic inflammation that leads to these kind of conditions is the kind of inflammation that is systemic, where the full body is involved in inflammation. Now, in one of our future videos, I'm going to be discussing in a little bit more detail which sort of conditions we sometimes place our body in that causes a systemic inflammation. Which things do we do to our bodies that results in inflammation throughout the body? Now, I want to briefly just touch on one thing. One of the most crucial forms of chronic inflammation is inflammation that happens in the arteries and the veins. We have spoken in our previous video about how important it is to keep the veins and the arteries in a good condition because you can have good quality blood, but if the veins and arteries are blocked, that blood cannot flow and deliver what it needs to deliver to each and every cell of the body. Inflammation of the veins and the arteries will result in little wounds forming inside those blood vessels and those wounds ultimately form scar tissue, it forms a whole clogging system which blocks the flow of blood through that piping network. So chronic inflammation in its most dangerous form is the inflammation that causes damage to the veins and the arteries. In our next video, we are going to zone specifically in this. We're going to be talking more specifically about the process of inflammation that happens in the arteries and the veins. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about how we can prevent that and how we can keep those veins and arteries open. For today's message, the core for us to understand is that inflammation in acute scenarios is a good thing. It is the body's natural response. We can aid that by improving blood circulation to an injured area and giving good quality blood to be delivered to that area. In that process, what happens is that we will be delivering vitamins, minerals, oxygen, nutrients that are necessary for cell restoration. But one of the other most important things that we'll also be delivering when we improve blood circulation to an injured area is sending immune cells to that area. Immune cells are the cells that fight infection they break up damaged cells and carry it away. They carry away the debris and they help to bring about the restoration. So I hope that you're going to join us for our next videos where we're going to elaborate on this. We're going to talk about, as I say, the damage to arteries and veins, how we can prevent that. And then in some of our other future videos, we're going to be emphasizing the important points to keep the immune system in particular healthy and um, bring that into the best possible functionality. Join us again as we continue unpacking some of the ways that we have to switch the way we think in order to help the body restore and bring about the best possible conditions for healing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.